Banjo-Kazooie is one of those classics that everyone looks back on fondly. Whether it be the memorable characters, awesome gameplay, great music, or fantastically curated worlds, people have a lot of nostalgia for this game. For me, while I did play the game a little bit back in the day, I never owned it and never even came close to beating it until now. With Banjo being on both the Nintendo Switch and Xbox Game Pass, now is a great time to go back and revisit this classic. But does it still hold up all these years later? That's what we're here to talk about. Danny from the Famicast here. If you're new to the channel, please be sure to subscribe and turn on those notifications. Sign off in the comments down below and we may read it out on our bi-weekly show called the Famicast. Today though, we're taking a look at Banjo-Kazooie in this retro review. Before we get kicked off proper here, just I want you guys to know for the purpose of this review, I played Banjo on the Nintendo Switch via the Nintendo 64 app using the My Nintendo N64 controller. While it isn't exactly the same as the original, I do feel that it's close enough to give us an idea of what the game is like regardless of your platform of choice. Now speaking of which, I, I've actually played the game on pretty much every platform it's available on. Xbox, Xbox Cloud Gaming on mobile and PC the original N64 hardware, and of course the aforementioned Switch. I'll be chiming in on differences where appropriate. Banjo-Kazooie first hit store shelves in North America on June 28, 1998, and was followed by a release in PAL territories on July 17, 1998. Now, gamers in Japan would have to wait a few more months for the game as it eventually came out on December 2nd, 1998, localized as banjo to kazooie no Daibouken, or Banjo and Kazooie's Big Adventure. It would eventually see a remaster on the Xbox 360 10 years later, hitting Xbox Live Arcade on December 3rd, 2008, and has been on Xbox platforms ever since. Of course, it also hit the Nintendo Switch expansion pack service in January 2022. Now, Banjo proved to not only be pop popular with critics, but also with gamers. The game went on to sell over 3.5 million copies on the Nintendo 64. You can see a breakdown of the sales numbers across various regions right here. As many of you are well aware, the story in Banjo-Kazooie starts out with Banjo's sister Tootie getting kidnapped by the grody witch Gruntilda. To save her, Banjo's tasked with going through a number of open world stages. To make progress in the story, you basically have to go around uh, collecting jiggies or these puzzle piece like collectibles that can be found scattered throughout the levels. Each level contains 10 of these, which can be acquired in a variety of ways. Sometimes they're just out in plain sight. Other times you have to solve a light puzzle. Sometimes fight hit, find hidden creatures called Jinjos, that's one of the ways to do it too. Or just take out specific enemies and more. Music notes are also spread throughout each level with 100 per stage. Collecting the notes allows Banjo and Kazooie to access locked doors. You'll need these to work your way deeper into Grunty's lair to an eventual showdown with the Big Bad Witch. Of course, Banjo-Kazooie offers a number of different levels, each sporting different themes. All of these are really well thought out and offer interesting and unique challenges. It's truly magical what Rare came up with all those years ago, and it, I think it still holds up to this day in terms of design. I mean, yeah, sure, modern games will more than likely be larger in terms of scale. I mean, that's kind of obvious no-brainer there. But Rare did a fantastic job of making the best use out of the tech that they could in 1998. Banjo and Kazooie have several moves at their disposal. Of course, you have traditional things like jump, you can jump with A, you can attack with B. Several other attacks and abilities are actually acquired throughout the experience too, including the Ratatat Rap, it's like an in-air attack with Kazooie blasting enemies with her beak. Uh, you have a glide, you have a flip to give you extra height, the ability to shoot eggs, uh, this thing called a beak barge to bust through enemies and also places in the environment and, and more. All of these moves take a bit of getting used to, especially early on. However, after some time with the game, you'll, you'll get the hang of it. One other thing you'll notice is the level of momentum for Banjo. I mean, Banjo can't just stop on a dime. It takes a short amount of time for him to slow down. I think this makes the game feel a little bit more realis realistic in that sense, and I think it feels good to control because of it. Several transformations are also available as part of the adventure. After acquiring a set number of tokens in select stages, the mysterious Mumbo Jumbo will use his magic to transform both Banjo and Kazooie into some kind of creature or item. Now these all play quite differently from the standard gameplay and I think they're quite a bit of fun. They can also be used outside of the stages too, offering access to areas that you couldn't reach before. It's a great addition to the game that I kind of wish was used just a little bit more. 
Playing with the original N64 controller actually feels pretty nice here. Now, as I mentioned above, it can take some time to wrap your head around the more complicated button combinations for some of the special moves, even with the OG controller. I think this is really compounded quite a bit more on standard control pads or handheld mode for the Switch specifically. Now, even with that said, I did find that the Xbox version feels quite a bit better. I mean, unlike the Switch version, the buttons have been remapped completely, giving it a more modern feel without the need to fiddle around with button settings. Not only that, but the camera controls are more or less modern here as well, though there are some areas that do not appear to offer full control of the camera. I haven't played it super extensively, but that's just kind of what I've come across so far. So yeah, the Xbox has a bit of an advantage here. Of course, you know, playing the game via the cloud on mobile with no physical controller, like attached to Bluetooth or anything, that has its own issues due to like touch controls and stuff like that. I, I do think that with that, there is a very doable touch layout provided, but you might find it a bit tough to pull up some of the more complicated moves without tactile buttons. For me, the two things that made the Switch version my go-to were the options for portable play and the inclusion of save states. Now, I, I know, I realize that some people out there loathe save states for classic games, perhaps feeling like it cheapens the experience. You know, for me, this modern edition helped speed up my playthrough and allowed me to stop and pick up and play at my convenience. For its time, Banjo-Kazooie is quite a good-looking game on the Nintendo 64. The overall look of what Rare was trying to do here, create this living, breathing world for Banjo, comes through, even now. Environments look believable, uh, enemies animate and react pretty well, and both Banjo and Kazooie sport quite a bit of detail. Rare made a really fantastic-looking game on the N64, and I think it still holds up today aesthetically. In terms of performance, Banjo-Kazooie isn't without issues. Of course, in the original N64 version, there are some issues with slowdown and frame rate drops. This has largely been fixed in the modern versions of the game. Uh, you know, when it comes to the Switch, Banjo maintains a pretty smooth frame rate for the most part. There are some issues in certain parts of the game where the game does chug a bit. Even with that said, I didn't run to anything that had a huge effect on gameplay. If you're looking for visual fidelity, the Xbox version of the game is where it's at. The game runs at up to 4K, it supports widescreen, and it just looks great. Now, not only are there modern controls, but the menus and the in-game text have also gotten a little bit of a facelift here too. In a lot of ways, this is the definitive version of the game. Now, playing via Xbox Cloud Gaming is also an option. I tried this out on both my phone and my PC, uh, both via Wi-Fi connections. Both versions provided a workable way to play the game, but I ran into some issues of you know, lag due to issues with my connection, you know, the streaming connection and all that type of stuff. I wouldn't go as far to say that you should totally steer clear of these versions, but if you have the means, you should definitely play the game on the Xbox Switch or the original Nintendo 64 hardware if possible for a more consistent experience. Of course, like so many rare games, the audio is absolutely on point here. While it doesn't feature voice acting, the groans and grunts of the characters help give the game its own identity. Music is memorable here too, with numerous tracks covering the breadth of themes that are on offer in the game. Some of these tunes will stick with you well after turning off the game. If you're out there looking to score a physical copy of the original N64 version of the game, you might have to shell out quite a bit of money these days, particularly for North American or PAL versions. Japanese versions are actually quite a bit cheaper, especially if you pick one up actually in Japan. I managed to grab a complete version of the game off of the Amazon marketplace here uh, in Japan for around 750 yen back in 2018, which at the time was around seven US dollars. My copy of the game is complete. Uh, it comes with the box, manual, the control reference card, inserts, and a plastic bag. Uh, I think it's a pretty clean set overall, especially considering the price that I paid for it. Even over two decades later, Banjo-Kazooie is still a treat to play. The gameplay is tight and responsive, the characters are charming, and the humor still hits. At the time of its release, Rare showed that they could not only make an excellent 3D platformer, but also one that rivals offerings from Nintendo themselves. While it obviously is a bit dated by today's standards visually, Banjo-Kazooie is still an absolute blast to play. I know I'm super late to the party on this one, but I'm glad to finally have gotten around to it. But for now, let's go ahead and turn things over to you guys. When did you first play Banjo-Kazooie? Did you have do you have any fun anecdotes to share about the game or how you got it or anything like that? What's your favorite level in the game? For the record, mine is probably Freeze Easy Peak. <laughs> Be sure to sign off in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. As always, 
Thank you for checking out this video. If you like what you see, please feel free to drop this one a like. If you're new to the channel, please be sure to subscribe. We've got tons of podcasts, video reviews, uh, looks at retro games like this, and a whole lot more. Again, this is Danny from the Famicast. Thank you guys so much for checking this out, and we'll catch you next time.